Today, I'll change the Lenovo M90Q to be a cute, modern little gaming machine. Stick around to see how these upgrades transform this compact PC. I got the idea from a famous YouTube channel named ETA Prime. He proposed the idea of attaching an LCD screen to a Lenovo M920Q in his video, which inspired me to create this 3D case to fit a 3.5 inch screen. I've put the link to his video in my video description. For the 3D case design, I designed the back of the case to fit the MSI RTX 3050 low profile, allowing the GPU to be installed without its bracket. This makes it cleaner and easier to install. Since I put the 3.5 inch screen at the front, I moved the ventilation to the bottom of the front bezel to allow the GPU to exhaust hot air outside the case. This time I designed the case to be printed in white. It should look fresh with the LCD screen and ARGB fan. I also designed full ventilation for the top cover, which makes the PC run cooler while gaming and quieter. The front LED screen allows me to display the CPU and GPU temperatures and load while the PC is running, as well as the date, time, and weather. So now let's dive deep into the step-by-step -step process of transforming this tiny PC into a cute little gaming PC. Now let's remove the top cover. To do this, undo the thumb screw at the back and slide it to the front. I'll replace the CPU fan with an ARGB fan, so now let's remove the stock CPU fan from the PC. The GPU bracket also needs to be removed. Here's the PCIe X16 riser for Lenovo Tiny 6. I bought this adapter for $20 from AliExpress, and it might be more expensive on Amazon. Now, let's secure the PCIe riser to the case with a screw that came with a PCIe riser box from the order. The Lenovo M90Q has two M.2 slots, so let's add one M.2 SSD to the free slot. Here, I have a Samsung Evo 970 2TB. It's a bit cheaper than the M2 PCIe 4.0 SSD, and this PC only supports PCIe 3.0, so it should be the best choice for me. First, I plan to use this fan for the setup. This fan is a PWM RGB fan that doesn't need a separate RGB cable or header, as it uses the RGB chip within its body. But after trying to fit it into the case, I realized it was a bit larger than the available space, so I switched to this one instead. It is a 92 mm ARGB fan. It will be more complex to install since it requires an ARGB controller for power, but I have no choice. So let's figure out the challenge and find a solution for it. To secure the fan, I only used a zip tie to attach the fan to the case on one side and to the CPU cooler heatsink on the other side. And yeah, it's pretty secure, as you can see, and it seems really strong. Now, the first thing I need to solve is that the fan uses a PWM cable, but this PC doesn't have a PWM fan header. I need to find a way to connect this fan to the motherboard. I tried to avoid making changes to the PC's physical setup as much as possible, but I had to make one exception. Since there's no cable adapter like this for sale on the market, I cut the CPU fan cable and wired it with a PWM fan header cable to create a connector conversion. This allows me to connect the PWM fan to the motherboard. Now let's deal with the second challenge, the ARGB controller header. Let's find a way to solve it. Just like in my previous video, I'll use this 5 volt ARGB controller to light up the fan. But where can I find the 5 volt power source for this adapter? To solve this challenge and beyond, I created an adapter for the whole setup. Here's the female USB C port to USB C, and I wired the ground wire and 5 volt wire to the ARGB adapter. This allows me to use this cable to connect the LCD screen and share the 5-volt power source with the ARGB controller as well. 
I designed the 3D case model using SketchUp. To make it easy to print, I divided the case model into three parts, the front bezel, the top cover, and the GPU back I.O. This file should fit only with the MSI RTX 3050 low profile. If you would like to install another GPU, you might need to adjust this file. I 3D printed this case using PETG filament with a Creality Ender 3V3 Plus at a printing speed of 250 millimeters per second. It took five hours to complete the printing. And here's the 3D printed case. Initially, I designed the ventilation in two parts with a large honeycomb pattern. However, after installing it on the PC, I realized that the ventilation doesn't cover the full RGB fan, which made me uncomfortable with it. So I designed a new one. This time, I made the honeycomb ventilation smaller and it now covers the entire top cover. This makes it look cooler and more standard. And here's the front bezel. Here's the cutout for the 3.5 inch screen. And now let's try to fit the screen into the cutout space to see whether it fits or not. All right, it fits nicely. Since I cannot screw the screen directly into the case, I designed the screw hole with an embedded female thread right here. I will use a bracket to secure the screen to the case. Now, let's connect the USB-C cable to the screen. And here's the back panel of the 3D case. I designed it to fit the MSI RTX 3050 low profile. And I also made a cutout hole for the female USB-C cable right here. The USB-C female port can be secured to the case with two screws. Now, let's do some cable management. There's a lot of free space right here, so it's easy to manage the cables. It probably can also accommodate a 2.5 inch SATA SSD. This time I designed the whole case with embedded nut female threaded screw holes. Unlike my previous design where the screws were put directly into the 3D printed case. I'm also surprised that all the screw holes fit perfectly, as you can see here. The screw goes through the screw hole smoothly and I can install it without any pressure. Now for the last one, the smallest screw, the GPU bracket screw. It also fits into the hole. This screw is very small, so it doesn't allow much room for incorrect measurements and needs to fit precisely. For this setup, I used a 300 watt AC adapter. I'm not sure if it's the original Lenovo adapter or made by a third party, but 300 watts should be suitable for this setup, even though it may not be reliable in terms of wattage. And here's the final project. It's amazing. I didn't expect it to be so beautiful like this. To fit the screen, I extended the front bezel from 10 millimeters to 20 millimeters. The overall PC volume has significantly changed, and now it measures 60 millimeters by 188 millimeters by 183 millimeters. To power the ARGB controller device and connect the LCD screen, I used a USB-A to USB-C cable. It's simple to use. Just connect the USB-A port to the PC and the USB-C port to the female USB-C port installed on the 3D case. Now let's power on and test it. The screen will load the theme after the PC completes booting into Windows and the app is running. Now let's perform the CPU stress test. Now the CPU fan is running very quietly. I can barely hear the fan noise. The CPU stress test score is also stable and higher 
compared to my last video when I used this PC with the RTX A2000 and its stock CPU cooler fan. Now let's perform the GPU stress test. The GPU fan is a bit loud when it spins at a higher RPM. This is because the GPU fan is too small and spins at a very high RPM, making it loud even in an open air setup. The RTX 3056GB Furmark scores are similar to the RTX A2000 that was tested in my last video. Now let's check the Samsung Evo 972TB that I installed on this PC. I need to format the drive to make it usable in Windows, so let's create a partition and assign a drive letter to it. Now the hard drive is ready to use. Here I have two M.2 SSD drives installed in this PC with a total of three terabytes of storage, which is massive. Now let's try some games. The first game to test with this PC is Shadow of the Tomb Raider with medium graphics preset settings. This PC setup can achieve around 80 frames per second to 100 frames per second. The fan noise during gaming is much improved. It is not as loud as a hairdryer like in my previous video testing. Now let's try an older title, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, with medium graphics settings. This game runs very well on low-end hardware, and as you can see, the FPS in the MSI After Burner graph on the right side of the screen is very good. Now let's move to God of War. With the original graphics preset at 1080p, the FPS achieves around 70 FPS. This game utilizes more CPU power and the CPU temperature stays below 70 degrees Celsius while the CPU fan is quiet. The GPU temperature is around 80 degrees Celsius and the fan is a bit loud. This is because the RTX 3050 LP is a two-time cutdown of the RTX 3050 version. From the RTX 3058 gigabyte to the RTX 3056 gigabyte. And this one is the RTX 3056 gigabyte low profile with a smaller heatsink and fan. Many people suggest that the RTX 3050 low profile single slot should fit perfectly in this PC without any case modifications, but based on my experience with many PC tests, I think a single slot low profile GPU with a 70 watt TDP is not suitable for gaming unless you have a very good airflow setup. However, if you have better space, you might consider a higher performance GPU that could accommodate your setup. Now let's try Resident Evil 4 Remake. The RE4 Remake is one of the most optimized games for various platforms such as iPhone, console, and PC. It has a lot of gaming presets to choose from, including performance mode and graphics priority mode. In this gameplay, I set it to performance mode to get a better frame rate, and if I locked it to 60 FPS, I could change to graphics mode and enjoy the game all day long. In conclusion, this project has been a great success. From designing and fitting the 3D case for the MSI RTX 3050 low profile, to managing cables and even running stress tests on both the CPU and GPU, everything came together smoothly. The addition of three terabytes of storage with the Samsung Evo 970 and the quiet operation of the fans are particularly impressive. Now with the system all set up, it's time to enjoy some gaming on this powerful PC. Thanks for following along with the build process, and I hope you found this video helpful and inspiring. Happy gaming. If you're not familiar with this voice, it's because it's not my voice. In this video, I'm using AI text-to-speech for the voiceover. I believe this will make it easier for you to understand what I'm sharing, as the AI can deliver the information more clearly than I can in a prepared speech.